Welcome back guys, Jimmy Jules here again with another Cray tutorial. In today's episode, we'll be going over how to make a controllable vehicle. Our vehicle can turn, accelerate and decelerate, and also detect when it runs into something. We've got a couple of effects on the car as well for the brakes, so that when we're braking or when we've crashed, the brakes turn on and light up the area. So first of all, to build the physical car, I've gone into the primitives section in the library, and I've manipulated these primitives to make the shapes of the car. You can see the car consists of a few boxes for the body of the car, the boot, and the lights. We've got some cylinders for the wheels, and a sphere for where the driver would sit. To make all of these objects group together, we've glued them all to this sphere with the G shortcut. So if we hover over one of our primitive shapes, press G and then click on the sphere, that is going to glue it to the sphere so that it moves with it. The first thing we'll be doing is going through how we would make our car move backwards and forwards. For this we'll be using a directional mover prop. We'll place this prop directly on top of the car in the centre, and we'll use a box to keep all of this nice and tidy. We'll stamp the box on top of the car, and then with the G shortcut again, we'll glue this to the sphere, so that wherever the car goes, the box will follow. We'll place all of the props that we'll want to move with our car into this box. So if we hover over the directional mover and press the B shortcut for box, and then click on our box, that will place the mover inside the box, and because the box is glued to the car, anything placed in this box will move with the car as well. Our directional mover will just be controlling the forwards and the backwards momentum of our car. Now we'll need a way to change this momentum with our keyboard. Over here we have a few props. We have an input trigger, an if not gate, a variable and a variable modifier. These are the four props that we'll be using to control the momentum of our car. In our variable settings menu, we'll go ahead and change the name of this to speed. This variable will control the speed of our car. While we're in here, we'll also change the minimum speed to a negative number, this will allow our speed to go below zero so that we can reverse. Within our directional movers settings, we also have a deceleration option, which we'll be using for the car as well. To control this, we'll use another variable, and we'll name this deceleration. First of all, we'll get our forwards momentum working. For this, we'll be using an input trigger to detect the keyboard input, and we've just set this to detect the forward key, or the W, and when we press this key, we want the speed to increase. We have our variable modifier over here, and we can use this to set our speed. So you can see here I've selected from the drop down menu the speed variable. We're going to set this value to 30. And we want to do this whenever the player presses the forward key. So we're going to plug the variable modifier directly into the key pressed output from our input trigger. So now when the player presses forward, it's going to set our speed variable to 30. Over on our car over here, I've copied our variable modifier and I'm going to set this to get our speed variable. This will wirelessly get the current value of our speed variable and we can send this signal into our directional mover. So we're going to get our speed variable and then send that directly into the speed of the directional mover. At the moment, our mover is just inside the box here and it's just following our car. If we set the movement speed now, it won't move the car at all. So we need to press the T shortcut while we're hovering over the mover, which will target a specific prop, and we're going to target the prop that we've glued everything onto. So now our directional mover is going to target this sphere and move the sphere. If we jump into play mode now and press the forward key, you can see the car drives away. We'll also incorporate a camera so that the camera follows the car. Now that we've got the car moving, we need a way to slow it down again. We've already got our input trigger detecting when the player is pressing forwards. We only really want the car to be speeding up while the player is holding that button. So when they're not holding that button, we want the speed to be set to zero again. For this, we're using a not gate and another variable modifier referencing the same variable, speed. But now we're going to plug our input trigger into the not gate, into the if input, and we're going to plug the output from our not gate into the variable modifier's power. And what we're going to do with this variable modifier is this is going to set our speed to zero. So now what this is saying is while the player is holding forwards, it's going to set our speed to 30, but as soon as they're not holding the button, it's going to set our speed back to zero. If we jump into play mode again now and press forwards just for a second, you can see the car moves forwards slightly. If we hold the button down, we can drive it forwards and it keeps accelerating. 
you'll notice that the car doesn't really roll, it just sort of suddenly comes to a stop. The car is coming to a stop as soon as we let go of the forward key because the deceleration is high. We'll lower this number until the player hits the brakes so that the car rolls after it's accelerated rather than coming to an abrupt stop. We already have our deceleration variable here and we'll be doing the same thing that we did with the speed variable. We'll copy this variable modifier and we'll change this to reference the deceleration variable and we'll be plugging this like the speed directly into the deceleration port on the directional mover. We've added one last variable modifier to our setup here and this is going to lower the deceleration while we're accelerating. So we'll change this to reference the deceleration variable and we're going to set this to 3. We'll plug our forward output into the variable modifier so now when we push the forward key it's going to lower our deceleration to 3. You can see now when I accelerate the car cruises for a while before coming to a stop and has much less deceleration. So these are the props that we're using for our forward setup, so I'm going to box those with the B shortcut in this box here, and we'll close that. We'll be using two of the same props for our brake setup, so I'll copy those with the Control c shortcut. And for our brakes, we'll be of course using the backwards input, so we'll change our input trigger to detect backwards, which is the S key. And this is going to set our speed to zero, and I'll grab a copy of that variable modifier and we'll change that to reference the deceleration variable and we're going to set that to 10. So now when we hit the backwards key it's going to set our speed to 0 and it's going to increase our deceleration. You can see in play mode now I can press forwards and cruise and then when I press the brakes it stops quite quickly. We'll want to be able to reverse as well with our car. For this we'll use a not gate in a very similar way that we used for our acceleration. Because we want to reverse, while we're holding down the backwards key, we'll set our speed to a negative number. So we'll set this to negative 5, for example. Then, of course, when we stop holding down the backwards key, we want the car to come to a stop again. So we'll use a not gate and one more variable modifier, and we'll plug our backwards key output into our if not gate. So now we've got basically the same setup as our acceleration. So when our player is holding down the backwards button, it's going to set our speed to negative 5 so that our car starts to reverse once it's come to a stop. And it's also going to increase our deceleration to 10 to slow the car. Then when our player is not holding the backwards key, it's going to set our speed back to 0 again. So that our camera follows the car, we'll add a camera. And we're just going to place this in such a way that it's pointing at the rear of the car. Once we've got our camera in approximately the right spot, I'm going to box this camera into the box attached to the car. This will mean that the camera moves with the car. If we jump into play mode now, we can give this a test. We can hold forwards and accelerate, let go and the car cruises, and then when we press backwards, the car will come to a stop. If we hold down backwards, the car will reverse, and we can let go, and the car will stop again. So that is pretty much perfect for our forwards and reverse driving. Now that we've finished with our reversing props, I'm going to box these up, just to keep it nice and tidy, and we can start on our turning. For our turning, we're going to be using a rotator prop. We'll be doing a similar thing with our rotation as we've done with our speed already, so I'm going to copy one of those variables and call this rotation, and we'll also copy the box that we've already created from our speed. For our rotation, we'll be using our left and our right keys, so we'll need an input trigger for the left input, and the right input, and we'll need a way to change between these selections, so we'll use a selector. We'll want our selector to have three ports, one for not turning at all, one for turning right, and the other for turning left. We'll plug our right output into port 2, and we'll plug our left output into port 3. This means the selector will be on port 2 when we're turning right, and port 3 when we're turning left. We're also going to need a way to set our rotation back to zero when the player isn't pressing left or right. For this we'll be using two NOT gates and an AND gate, and we'll be saying if the player is not pressing left or right, or in this case we're saying if the player is not pressing left AND then not pressing right, so we'll plug our output from our NOT gates directly into the ports of the AND gate. Now when the player is not pressing the left or the right direction, the AND gate will output a true signal. We'll be using this signal to activate port 1 on our selector. So ports 2 and 3 are for our directions, right and left, and port 1 will be for no direction at all. With that in mind, we can set up our selector. 
So we know that from port 1 will be when the player is not pressing left or right. So I've got a variable modifier here that's going to set the rotation to 0, which is exactly what we want when the player isn't pressing left or right. Port 2 will be when the player is pressing right, so we'll increase our rotation to 100 for that. And when the player is pressing left, we'll set a negative rotation, so the player turns left. Same as our mover, we're going to box this rotator into the box on top of the car, so that that moves with the car. And we're going to target the sphere with the T shortcut by hovering over the rotator, pressing T, and clicking on the sphere. Now we haven't got anything plugged into our rotator currently, so we'll copy a variable modifier and change that to get the rotation value, or our rotation variable, and we'll plug the current output into the rotation speed. Now if we hop into play mode, we can drive forwards, and we can also turn left and right, and slam on the brakes as well. At the moment though, the steering feels fairly airy, so I'm going to increase the deceleration on our rotator, just to 100, and I'll see how that feels. See, the car stops rotating a lot faster now, which is more realistic, I think. It's also a bit slow on the acceleration as well, so we'll just up that to 80, give that one final test, and that does feel a bit more responsive. Next, we'll go through adding a brake light, so we have a visual indicator of when the car is decelerating. We'll grab out a calculator here, and we'll be using our deceleration variable modifier that we already have, and we'll be checking the value of this with a calculator. We know that when we're braking, our deceleration is going to be high, so we're going to check with this calculator when the deceleration is greater than 5, and we're going to plug the output from our variable modifier into the value A port on the calculator. So this calculator is telling us when we're braking, so now we just need to turn on the light. We've got an output of 1 from our calculator when we're braking, and we'll plug this output into the power of our light. We're also going to box the light with the box that's on top of the car, so the light will move with the car. Now in play mode, you can see when we hit the brakes, the car brake lights come on. For a bit of an extra effect, we can hide the brake lights entirely until we start braking. We've got our hider prop here, and we're going to target the brake lights with this prop by pressing the T key while we're hovered over it, and then selecting both of the brake lights. We'll set our visibility down to zero, and our transition to zero as well. This will mean that the boxes disappear immediately, and we'll set this to affect the target, so that it affects the targeted objects that we've selected. You can see that if we plug our existing calculator directly into the hider, and then test this, the lights will be turned on while we're not braking, and off while we're braking, which is the opposite of what we want. To reverse this, we'll use a NOT gate, We'll remove our wire connecting the calculator and the hider by hovering over the wire and pressing delete, and we'll open up the settings for our NOT gate, and we're going to run this signal through the NOT gate to reverse it. Now you can see by default our brake lights are not there or turned on, and when we brake, they appear and the brake light turns on. You'll notice at the moment the car is able to drive through trees, so now let's add some props to make it collidable. I've added a sensor to the top of the car here, and this is going to act as our car hitbox. So I've just made the sensor area about as wide and long as the car, so that when it's over the top of the car, it fits nicely. One last setting we'll need in our sensor is that we'll need to change the object that it's going to detect. We're going to set this to accept target. Once we've set that, we're going to target the sphere that's beneath the sensor. Because we've got this set to accept target, this sensor is going to detect anything except for the targeted object. This just means the car isn't going to detect itself and think it's hit something, so our sensor is going to ignore the sphere. When our sensor detects something, we want the car to stop completely. We're going to copy a variable modifier, we'll set this one to speed, and we're going to set the speed to zero. We're then going to copy this, and change it to reference the deceleration variable, and we're going to set that to a very high number. Then when our sensor detects something, we're going to want to turn these variable modifiers on. So when our sensor detects that it's run into something, it's going to set our speed to zero and our deceleration to a very high number so that our car stops suddenly. We're also going to box this sensor in the box on top of the car so that the sensor moves with the car. You can see in playtest mode now, if we run into a tree, our car acts as though it's crashed. 
So there we have it guys, we've got our fully functional player controlled car all ready to go. We're able to go forwards, backwards, turn, and we've got a couple of effects in there as well. And we've also got some collision detection. I'm going to leave it at that for this one guys. If you have any questions at all, definitely leave a comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This has been Jimmy Jules, and I'll see you in the next one.